Welcome to the Casting Couch 2.0. So a lot of people have been asking me, DMing me, just kidding, no they fucking haven't. You know how people like, that's like the go-to thing It's they say on social media or like when they're trying to seem like popular or cool, like they'll be like, you know, everyone's been DMing me about this or everyone's been asking me. It's like, no, no they fucking haven't. No one cares, bro. But uh, I'm gonna let you fucking know the status of this couch regardless if you like it or not. So listen up and don't click out of this video. I think a part of why I haven't brought the 2.0 out into the YouTube universe, um, if you will, is because I'm, I'm a little, I don't feel like it lived up, is, is living up to the OG one. Uh, if, if you don't remember, the original one, you know, saw so much shit um, that it literally had to be taken it snapped in half first of all it snapped in half um and it had to be taken out like keep in mind this was like probably 2018 before yeah no probably 2017 um so keep in mind pre-covid uh the 1800 got junk people uh decided to go they they came in they saw the state of the couch and they're like, excuse me, like, we'll be back. We got to run to Target. They came back with N95 masks. Pre-COVID, mind you. Um, you know, they were saying something about like a foreign substance they noticed or something like that. But uh, anyway, the 2.0 right here, it's not living up to expectations, to be frank. I don't feel one with it. It doesn't have that sleeper capability, you know? Like, I need to be able to walk in here uh, after a bender and just become one with this for the next 16 hours, along with, uh, you know, a few, a few hundred pounds of just chocolate delight uh, that I met at the bar last weekend hmm. and and this isn't to mention that half of it I went to grab the handle you know because of course it's a recline I only go recliner I don't go I don't do the any it has to recline first of all for reasons you can guess and I'm not going to go into specifics but I went to pull the handle here you hear that handle so this side still works I'm not going to recline now and knock over the tripod but this side still works but I went you know I went to recline on that side, boom, just went flying, splintering plastic everywhere. Uh, so needless to say, I'll be looking to upgrade. Anyway, that's enough on this. I just wanted to keep you updated uh, because, you know, I do spend a lot of time on here. This was the most important part of this video, this update. Obviously, I know you don't really give a shit about the chest and try workout portion, and neither do I to give a, to be fucking honest. But, uh, yeah, here goes nothing. I started off this session with some incline dumbbells, and I've been, I'd say, 75% of my pressing movements for chest in the last year or two have been incline based. And that's just because from the years of powerlifting, I think a lot of powerlifters, you know, I'm not the only one, um, you know, everything's so flat bench focused uh, with incline and upper chest development, uh, usually thrown in as, you know, a second or third thought. Um, and not really given much attention. So needless to say, so basically I say all that to say my tits were sagging and I was not happy with it. But uh, yeah, I really had like, I, you know, it's going to take a while, I feel like, to kind of slowly bring up. I didn't, I didn't, chest has never really been a strong point for me anyway. I've kind of, my triceps have overpowered the chest on most pressing movements anyway. But I really have like a bird upper chest. So I'm finally starting to put a little bit of meat on that bone, on that upper, upper tit bone. But uh, slowly but surely, but definitely more incline focused. And what I'll do, like you see here, I'm, I'm kind of, 
uh, I'm supersetting between um, I was supersetting there between pretty pretty light weights like the 70s and then dropping 20 pounds to the 50s and doing 10 reps each. So 20 reps total going straight back to back and doing about four sets of that um, to lead off the workout. And with minimal rest times between, obviously you're supersetting that initial 20 pound drop. And then only really taking like a minute, two minutes tops between uh, before, you know, picking up the 70s again and going back at it. But here you see another incline movement. Uh, like, I, like I said, that's been the primary focus. And I really like these hammer strength. Uh, I really like the hammer strength loaded, um, plate loaded incline. Uh, I feel like... You know, sometimes incline, I don't know about you guys, but I've always had a bit of a shoulder issue when it came to incline. It was kind of hit or miss. I really stay away from barbell incline um, as it just really does not feel too great on my rotator cuff. Although I'd like to start to incorporate it again if I can. Maybe in one of the next few videos I'll give it a try. Uh, it'll have to be super, super light, and I'm not even confident that'll feel too good. But always looking for that variety, um, you know, in and outside of the gym. Whoa, look at that lighting. That is majestic, the Headless Horseman. But that, no, that wouldn't be the Headless Horseman. That'd be like the Bodiless Horseman. Like, I just got a head here, a big fat head. That's it. That is some majestic lighting. Looks like I'm shooting like a fucking porno or something. <laughs> Should have left this to the alternate channel. But finishing up the chest pressing portion with this more of a flat bench style machine press, uh, which I'll obviously do as one of the last movements during the chest portion before moving on to the triceps here. And uh, for triceps... They, like I said before, they've always been a strong point. And one one thing I like to do, I've always liked to do with triceps, is just basically switch up the grips as much as possible. So by kind of tweaking the grips, so you'll see here I kind of switched out uh, to get this. I actually like this because it had like... That I don't, you can't see from here, but the hand grips on it were kind of like molded to your hands. It's kind of hard to explain, but it felt good, bottom line. And, uh, you know, just basically switching the attachments on some of these tricep pushdown movements. Uh, you know, you could go palm down, and then you could switch it up, go palm up, use the rope. And I feel like uh, not only does that keep it more interesting, but I've kind of... I felt like that's helped with overall tricep growth, kind of give it that more full, rounder look all the way through. Like when you do that front double bicep, you want to make sure you have those uh, that those meat hammocks hanging down below, you know, just almost looking like they're just falling off the bone, like, you know, call me Texas Roadhouse. But anyway, yeah, that just made me think of my ex, so I'm going to go uh, do a set of barbell curls while I cry in the bathroom. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for listening to my synopsis about the casting couch. Peace.